We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. The platform from which you judge and interpret things is called a mindset. There are some scriptures that I read in the Bible that really made me afraid over the years. One of them is, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. How can God equate a man's life with the content in his heart? He said, for as a man thinketh in his heart. And then another scripture says, guard your heart. Have you ever come across that scripture? It says, guard your heart with all diligence. Be meticulous about it. He said, for out of it. Hallelujah. New Living Translation says, for with it you will chart the course of your destiny. Guard your heart with all diligence. Hallelujah. It's always an honor for me to talk, not just with different people, but young people, because... What God is about to do in the nations is very prophetic. And we are his battle acts. We are the tools that God will be using to accomplish all that he will be doing. Hallelujah. But then there is a big mountain that we need to conquer. In Africa, in Nigeria, in Zaria, and only God knows where else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I took out time to study the history of Nigeria and a bit about Africa. I'm not a historian. And I got to find out that as a result of the colonial rule, hallelujah, a spirit and a mindset was put upon the black race. Are you listening to me? And that mindset is a curse. A mindset that teaches men that all about your life is servitude are you listening to me when although nigerians gained their independence they were not free until today we are still not free and if we must rise up listen to me to that prophetic destiny that god has designed for us then we must come out of certain mindsets tonight's message will wrestle a lot of mindsets and kick them out of your life Hallelujah. I began to find out in my life that a man can never rise above and beyond his mindset. I know many of you have heard it, but write it. You can never rise beyond your mindset, your plane of perception. Did you know the limitation in Africa today is not the natural resources in this country or in this continent? Africa is the richest continent in the whole world hallelujah nigeria is a very prophetic nation yet there's still death corruption poverty mindsets hallelujah and this mindset has eaten into the educational system of this country hallelujah such that when someone writes jam as soon as they give him admission the next thing he's eyeing one position 
just iron one office oh lord let me be a clerk let me be a secretary no productivity no advancement no thinking out of the box we have become managers of the realm that we found ourselves no breaking status quo to do anything hallelujah some of you your parents have told you just follow it don't try to do anything new hallelujah the bible lets us know that 12 spies were sent to go and look at the land of canaan and the bible says they all came back happy they gave moses and aaron the report they said it was wonderful i mean the land is truly flowing with milk and honey hallelujah and then 10 of them says but nevertheless in other words taste the fruit delicious really nice however we saw certain kinds of people that are half humans and half something else six fingers six toes terrible people to the extent that our mind interpreted us as grasshoppers before them hallelujah said the jebusites the hittites the anarchites dwelt in that land and while they were speaking a man called caleb was just listening and he allowed them to finish speaking nonsense and then he says well this is my own report let us go up at once in other words look we are more than ready he said we can take these people forget about their height there are two animals that jesus associates himself with in the bible number one is the lion number two is the eagle and this bird and this animal they are the king of their kingdoms hallelujah and this is not because for instance the lion the lion is not the strongest the lion is not the wisest hallelujah the lion is not the biggest but there is an attitude there is a mindset the lion has a resolve and a determination and he made him to become the king of the jungle follow me tonight the eagle is such a robust creature such a robust bird that history tells us that the eagle does not fly it doesn't flap its wing it soars it will rise to a high altitude and stand and for a long time try to gauge the current of the wind while other birds are just flying and hoping that the wind goes their direction the eagle will stand such powerful vision that from a high mountain top the eagle can look at a lamb and come with accuracy and precision and pick it up hallelujah strong animal many qualities about these creatures for instance the lion will never eat any meat it did not kill if you give it dead meat no it will kill by itself understands the power of conquest and honor and jesus calls himself the lion of those many animals in judah is the lion of the tribe of judah hallelujah and the eagle to the extent that god loves these creatures that he designed creatures after this likeness and put them before his throne the lion the calf the face of a man and the face of the flying eagle the first thing i want to let you know is that mindsets are a sum total of number one your environment your environment right your mindset is a sum total of your environment number two your experiences your environment cultures your mindset those of us outside are we following say amen hallelujah your environment your experiences number three your cultural background cultural background cultural background number four your level of orientation and exposure
Alléluia. Praise God. These are mind builders. So look up. Every one of us, when we get born again, we come into Christ with heterogeneous mindsets that are a derivative of many factors. Are you listening to me? I've always given this an exam as an example. Someone who grew up in Portacot or Wari or Lagos has a different mindset and an ideology from someone who grew up in Zaria. Is that correct? In Zaria here, a bus can stop and reverse just because of one person and can delay and wait. But down south, there's no time for that. You have to find a way of maneuvering yourself to jump out if you're interested in highlighting at that point. Because the people are serious and they are ready to move forward. There are certain mindsets. Hallelujah. In the north, for instance, I mean, you don't need to bow down or bend or do anything. Just maintain some level of courtesy and speak softly and you greet someone and that's okay. But in the south, you, that's not enough. Hallelujah. No matter how tall you are, you must bend down and greet. These are mindsets. Now, and it so happened that a majority of the factors that shape our mindsets did not come from the word of God. Hallelujah. Please follow me. This is very important. And so, as many as our heads are, just imagine that there are no bodies in this auditorium. Plenty heads. A summation of various mindsets. Hallelujah. Various mindsets. You have arrived at certain conclusions about life based on certain things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When you come into Christ and you get born again, immediately the Holy Ghost begins his work of transformation. And that transformation is not just changing you as it were physically, but he begins to work on your mindset. He begins to scrutinize and edit your mindset thoroughly. And let me tell you something, this does not happen overnight. Are you listening to me? Because you have come to gain security and confidence over certain mindsets. For instance, there are certain people who never believe that they can make it in life on their own. There must be an external help somewhere. I don't mean godly help. You get what I'm saying. They can never. There are students that even if you give them the exam question before the exam, they will still fail. The only thing is that let me copy it and answer it in a sheet and then enter with it. Mindsets. That's how they, they, they went from primary one to JS1. During Waek, that was what happened. That's how they wrote jam. It has become a mindset. So when you say you are victorious, you say, of course, with my paper on my hand and my ability to be crafty and cunning, I know I'll make it in this life. Hallelujah. There are other people who believe that the way to treat people is an eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. What else for what again? Leg for leg. Anything. Do me as I do you. Don't say that other part because it's very ungodly. Hallelujah. And so we have all kinds of, we, we have guys who come from cultures where a lady cannot talk looking at the guy in the eye. Correct? She will bow down or do whatever. Now you come into a new environment and you carry your village with you. And you are moving everywhere. Hoping that everyone is that atmosphere. Mindsets. So now you are in a class for instance. Or you are in koinonia like this. And they say give your neighbor a high five. And you are wondering. There are contemplations in your heart. What kind of disrespectful environment is this? Mindsets. Let me tell you, as you see people move, they are carrying several things with them. They may be quiet. You may put with one on it. You may barb it only. They are mindsets. Mindsets. There are certain people who have never seen a miracle in their life. 
never seen one and so the day they see anything i watch the faces of people during miracle service and i see the shock that happens when you lift your hands and someone falls by your side you're just mindset every time the word of god comes you know what it does it's like an arrow and it hits different mindsets so mindset say lie lie i don't agree it begins to challenge your mindset and it's like a wall strongholds listen demons take advantage of these mindsets and they access certain lives there are many families today who believe that they believe in what i call traditional christianity you, you get my point we love god we we'll go to church on sunday however we won't go and visit the man but there are certain things we can take along with us when the going gets tough it's the tough that gets going and so we use that mantle where is the god of our herbalist and you use it to part the red sea and so there are mindsets mindsets there are many fathers today for instance the day the wife calls him darling he looks and says ah what is my wife watching that's supposed to be a lovely compliment but the man will be offended for maybe months i said what kind of disrespect is this hallelujah or a small child just say mommy i need to tell you something he said you didn't even add my mindsets there are guys who will never greet a lady for instance and say you must be the one to greet me that's how it is in our village so they are carrying it again atmosphere mindset although you are born again now follow me you are born again you are filled with the holy ghost but you carry it with you and when god wants to step in and do something in your life those mindsets stand as strongholds are you listening to me and so god must break those mindsets and they give way there are some of you who never believe that you can help anybody there's one very dangerous house statement don't ever find yourself confessing that statement it's a curse on yourself hallelujah there are people who believe listen to me there are people who believe that they can never be blessed to be a blessing to others hallelujah there are other people who believe i'm telling you maybe some of you are even here there are some people who believe god can never hear them directly they say pray for us you think they are joking but they mean it i want to ask you a question tonight what mindset did you come here with tonight because god is about to work on certain mindsets dangerous and terrible mindsets there are people who believe for instance you can get born again get into a relationship sleep around so long as you are going to marry the lady guaranteed it's a mindset so when the word of god is coming about purity and holiness that mindset say forget it who is not doing it there are mindsets that believe that if you want honor be a pastor correct and sadly there are many ministries that's what they call spiritual development so the day you get born again your ambition your goal your plan is to come to a point where you become a pastor so all the brothers want to be pastors and if you are not a pastor you are a failure based on the mindset that has been created so everybody's moving around i'm a pastor i'm this i'm that there are certain people listen who because of the challenges that they went through they you drank gary using your hand eh? you mix the sugar with your hand and drank it so that anger is still in you and you are looking for the people to vent that anger on so the day they make you a leader you try to make sure you prove to everybody you are not as naive as before again why did you bring fork for me to eat this food why did you do this as if you were not using your hands before mindsets and we are you getting blessed tonight and we use these things to define our behavior with other people there are other people who believe that once you are simple with certain people they disrespect you so the moment they see anybody they square up their shoulder say please bring me my blackberry 
Say no, the other one. I mean the bold, bold what? Not the other one. Or let me even use the galaxy tab. I think that one will be faster. What is who cares? Now you think the people are being impressed, and someone else with his mindset is being surprised. He's saying, You mean this is the definition of fulfillment in this man's world? Hallelujah. So the guy is coming close to a lady and he's flipping his phone. And in his world, he has people like him, he has found them around. So they have become groups, they are mindsets. So who is wearing which watch? Who is wearing this? And that's all his pursuit. That's what drives him. You are sitting at the back, but you believe based on your mindset that everybody is seeing you. Mindsets can be terrible. Let me tell you. Mindsets. Hallelujah. There are guys that come with mindsets. They believe. No lady can tell me no. I ask any lady I want at any time. I don't hear no. I am this. I am chief this. I am chief that. Devilish, satanic strongholds of the mind. Are you following me now? There are mindsets. There are certain people who have been taught money doesn't grow on trees. All these tithes, they are deceiving you. All these giving you better keep your money. They can have one million naira. You, you have 10,000. If you give them 100 naira, they'll collect and add it. Mindsets. And there are all kinds of books to help and massage that mindset and keep you in it. Hallelujah. Do you realize that every one of us in this place, including myself, have mindsets that have built up themselves as strongholds? Are you listening to me? And except these mindsets are conquered, some of us will never rise beyond our present level. Hallelujah. There are certain people, they go to school, they do everything. But their mindset still takes them. I was listening to one man. He said, he's gone abroad. He did this, but he likes his local dish. It's his best food. I say, it's a lie. It's a lie. You went abroad. What did you eat? Where did you go? Abroad is it's like, say, I studied science. Where did you go? Which restaurant? He said, he came back and he found out that all those things are junk. Not everything is junk. Oh, let me tell you the truth. Just tell us based on your level of financial resources and the exposure that was available at that time you went to a place that did not create the best of pictures but don't because there are certain people living in a higher realm of life and you see the thing about mindsets is this listen there are two factors or forces that can help you get out of mindsets number one the word of god or number two premature exposure the danger is that if it's not the word of God that begins to reorient your mind, you're going to become a disaster. Because when you suddenly realize, let me give you an example. Someone who always just enters express. Express! Just stop. He carries you to wherever you are going. And then one day someone gives you a lift. You've always known you are fine. It's just that you didn't know the accent. And then someone just stopped you in his bmw x5 i've been talking about that car hallelujah for me or you you are a student you better read your book you have exams next week hallelujah now you enter the car ah! suddenly you begin to find out that you mean there is a higher realm of life than what i have known hallelujah you sit down the seat adjusts itself on you how your mind something is happening at that point when you drop from that car what happens it leaves you with a memory the memory displaces something in your car your roommate that used to say hi you now say ah don't things are changing orientation are you listening to me or they now make you a leader whether a leader of your fellowship or something and suddenly for the first time they held your bible you've never known how it feels you've only imagined it ah, 
and you wanted to behave yourself but later on you couldn't hide it you laughed and you smiled and then everybody wants to leave the old for new if you taste of the new and it's better you will dump the old quickly when i was in port Harcourt, there was a preacher the church i attended there fulfilling world ministries and the man of god traveled abroad to uk for the first time they gave him three thousand pounds as honorarium when he came back pastor he said i saw a level of life that is better than the way you wicked members in this church have been subject no really and he in anger he said so i am this valuable and you people who have been playing with me you go and see the way other people have you seen people like that say from today from today and called for certain partners that will be sowing into his life every week to the end of that year it was a, and they did something wrong in the church and he left he was going the members had to run and bring him i sat down there and i said you see you see why god doesn't answer some prayers you see why god doesn't answer oh god take me even if it's ghana take me out of this country and god says the way you are if your leg matches the international airport you you will come back you will not hear god again or anybody there are people like that oh. they give you five thousand naira home and abroad that's all you have you just have to depend on god and use it well one day you went to your friend's house and the father gave you hundred thousand ah! you did everything you did in your small world and there was still change you didn't even know what to do with it again from that time, the day you see your father counting 5,000, you are just tapping your hand. And say, if you won't give me, I know how to get it. Now I'm smart. This is what leads people into prostitution. They tested something that looked better than the old life, but it was not a derivative of the word of God. And so there's that craving. If I can just sleep with this orgasa, and 200,000 is my own. It's not like it's for us to share my own. Who will know? And they start before you know it they are changing mindsets and so our goal in this place because there are many of you the way you are receiving the word of god your mindsets are saying no it's just your head that is saying yes when you are saying yeah yeah your mind is saying you are joking i'm not giving way i will preserve this mindset there are some of you who will see someone maybe your friend going to go and sleep with one man traveling even during this exam now going to go and collect the money for exam and you say well the way i am you know it's not good to disturb people who told you this this issue of it's not good they used to say this should not be done start scrutinizing the foundation of your mindset where did it come from hallelujah are you listening to me see those mindsets responding in anger i'm seeing all of them the mindsets just coming from east west north middle belt all of them just rising we will crumble them tonight in the name of jesus because the bible says psalm 78 from verse 10 down to 17 and when you read further the bible says that the nation of israel haven't gone through 430 years of captivity the children were born in slavery born in servitude hallelujah the bible says when they went to the wilderness they limited god by saying can god make a way in the wilderness do you know there are some of our parents today who do not ever believe that they can buy a new car i mean brand new i'm not talking of belgium brand new that you are the one who removes the rubber when you say that they just laugh this stupid boy you are still young grow up and you understand what is all that and there are many of us from the time you were earning five thousand now god has helped you you are earning two hundred and fifty thousand to buy a new shirt the day you buy you will cry because it looks like you lost a baby mindsets you are in the boutique you are just frowning you come back what happened i bought a new shirt this is something that is supposed to be a blessing 
but that mindset of suffering you are used to it to the extent that when god wants to give you a new opportunity say no god is okay i i need to you go to a restaurant you, you, you someone is paying the bill you're already embarrassing yourself how much is everything what is your business Stay the person took you these are mindsets that disgrace us in public places you are well dressed you kept quiet nobody knew when they said sir you just said how are you the one paying for it or some of you because you have never been there when you get there you do crazy things they say okay pick this hey let me take it now because i don't know where give me this uh, puff puff ice cream give me this this cake is it for birthday or just normal days bring it you reveal your mindset when opportunities give room that's why many people limit themselves some people go for a job interview as soon as you enter you don't greet anybody you just go to the seat and sit down you say i got first class they just tell you get up and walk out of this place they will never give you that job doesn't matter who prayed for you bad manners you just step in and enter and just sit down and you're looking at everybody say how are you you say hi hi you are looking for a job you think that's how the people got that job they ask you a question see let me tell you if that god will help us this night oh say amen, amen. you entered the job this in you saw that it was your uncle they say ah oh, uncle yeah god help you they are doing an interview for you mindsets mindsets See, this is why some people never step into some levels of grace and lifting and power. They never become leaders. They remain servants forever. That's the mindset in Africa. You see Nigerians on CNN or BBC and see what many of them do. Hallelujah. We spend money and pay their flight. They take from the national treasury. And you, when it's time for them to speak, Look at the ambassadors of many countries articulating themselves very well. When it gets to the point of Nigerians, they take personal issues that is not the business of the world and start venting. Listen to them on radio everywhere. Mindsets. Preachers, mindsets. They name their sermons after their annoyance. I am coming back this time around for you. What is that? You just know that he's fighting with someone. It's not the oil, but the hand that holds the oil that matters. Let me tell you something. A mindset can limit you. You can never rise above and beyond the level of your mindset. Make sure as you are laughing, you are taking it seriously. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God began to open my mind about my mindset, I found out that if I don't change my mindset, my life will never change. And I began a radical project to change my mind. Because as innocent and loving as my parents were, some of their mindsets were not consistent with God's word. Are you listening to me? And I knew that I have to change it. There are many of you who are waiting right now for your father or mother to die. You have been eyeing the house. You see people fighting. They are fighting over their grandfather's land. They should be ashamed of themselves. They say when he left it, was this not where he put the mark? From that time till now, you've not been productive to rise up and do everything. You are even gathering your children and say, when you see Uncle so 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 hate him for the rest of your life because that land is our own. What did I say? The children say, it's our own. They stand up with that mindset. They go around to school, say it's our land. You see why I sang that song? What's the song again? I 
can go back to the way. What is the it? What is the it? The mindset. It used to be terrible. So you are, you are making a vow that I won't go back. I've seen a higher light. I've seen a better life. That you can be prosperous and make heaven. That you can be a millionaire and make heaven. That you can walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity and still be prosperous. That you can shake your generation and bless people. That, from, that you can write the books that are in your heart. I study a lot about great people. Have a lot of their documentaries. Hallelujah. And I'm touched at how they spoke to themselves. Talk about the man Nelson Mandela. Great man. Had a dream in his heart and he said he was going to change the course of South Africa. And 20 years in prison did not stop him. Right now, even on their currencies, his face that is there. Almost every note. I think every note. Now, many people clap and we use him as a case study. He changed his mindset. Jesus was born in Nazareth. And the Bible says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus said, no. My vision is beyond this place. I refuse to be confined. Do you know that many of you seated here, if you will tap one third of the grace that God has put in your life, your generation will not recover from what you have. But you've been hearing all kinds of voices that have been speaking to you. Every time you look at Oprah Winfrey, you just imagine yourself but now with the perspective of the kingdom and your mindset just punishes you and said you better hibernate i think you need some rest you think people just grow and become tv hosts hallelujah do you know how bad a mindset is a mindset can be so bad to the extent that if someone comments you you can think is the person is intimidating you or the person is insulting you they just say, ah, you speak very well. Though. You go back and ask 10 people and say, if somebody is angry with you, how should the person respond? Mindsets. Many of us have had different mindsets. When our parents are angry, they have names, they call us. Stupid boy, say, sir. So you have grown with that mindset. And now every time you want to move forward, that thing replaced. See, you can change the future, but you cannot change history. The mind has a memory bank. It keeps records of all the days when you could not do certain things. And when God begins to speak to you and say, look, I can take you to a higher place. Do you believe it? One of the greatest gifts a man can have is self-confidence. I don't mean arrogance. Self-confidence. Some of you have refused to learn how to drive till today, till tomorrow. Not because a car is not available. You believe the day you get in the road, you are going to kill somebody. And yet you see these, these outside boys, small boy of 9 years, 10 years. You know when they park the car in PZ, the masters will be resting. The boys are so confident. They don't ever imagine accident. That's how they learn. No, no driver's license, no nothing. many of you lose confidence you have a presentation you you are the best student you have the best work but you are fidgeting come and lead prayer you who prays very well now you are praying and oh father in the name of jesus you find yourself saying things you shouldn't say you didn't even know you have ended the prayer because of pressure all kinds of things but when the holy spirit begins to walk on you listen to me the first thing is he exposes the flaw in your mindset. The greatest deceit that can happen to any man in the earth is to believe your mindset is okay the way it is. Every time I interact with God's word, I look at myself. Sometimes I just look at myself at the mirror. I say, Joshua, change for God's sake. And then I slap my head and I laugh back again. But I'm just, these are just efforts to say you need change. I read some of them his book multiply your success lead powerful leadership book there are many of you that what you are seeing ENI and all of these things 
God is already, every time you sit here, God is telling you, do 10 times more than what you are seeing. You say, God, me? When will you stop that mindset of inferiority and complex? Are you listening to me? That mindset of unworthiness and false humility and embrace what God has said about you. There are ladies in this place. You believe that if you get married, it's a miracle. In fact, the wedding should be called Thanksgiving, not, not wedding solemnization. You just have some nasty, negative things about yourself. The other ladies, their hands are soft and tush, but our hands, the testimony of hard work. Mindsets. Mindsets. Hallelujah. Mindsets. There are some of us, the first day they give you fork and spoon and knife, you sit down and be laughing at yourself for a long time. It's not like you cannot use it. Is it excitement or pressure? You are just, you don't even know what to do. Say, I deserve a good life. Say it. Africa. This is the gift Africa gave us. We grew up and met mindsets that will never tell us we can arise. Never. The day you took first, you went to your father and said, Daddy, I took first. He said, eh? What did you work for? What did I pay your school fees for? Give me a chance, Jerry, as the mechanic come. And you are wondering. You are saying somebody who took 10th position, they caught chicken for the person, your neighbor. And you took first. And they trivialize it. And you say, okay. According to my mindset, first is the same as 14th position. The next, next time, you get 20th position. And your father says, I always knew. He said, it doesn't make any difference. Some of us grew up with that mindset. And so, excellence leaves your life permanently. You don't value it. You don't respect it. Get up and throw clothes on your, on your bed and leave it there. Say, sure, I'm going to marry one day. Mindsets. So, two couples get married. Are you, let me use somebody. Come, my dear. Are you ready to accept this lady as your lovely way? You didn't even listen. You just nodded. Yes. You and God, yes. Two of you go to the house. Clash of heterogeneous mindsets. Coming from several places. In our world, my father treats me like a queen. The other guy in our world, I'm the king. Clash of values. When I'm pregnant, will you cook for me? Am I crazy? Will I cook for you? Men don't go to our kitchen in our, in our culture mindsets you see why it's good to stay with the word of god he said do not be conformed to this age but be what transform what does a transformer do say it what does a transformer do changes things god bless you my dear mindsets because the way many of us are going our mindset will lead to a fatal accident in life you are praying in tongues, you are moving, but your mindset is taking you back. Your mindset is taking to the extent. Do you know that? Well, you can ask Jake's and Bishop. By God's grace, we have prayed for thousands of people in tongues and have found out that 90% of people who have challenges receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit at that spot are people who were challenged with their mindsets. When they begin to speak, they turn aside and they are looking. They feel like I'm such a villager. I cannot even articulate myself. Now you are saying I should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Did I really receive it? Or the one I received came from somewhere? They say turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor you have a great destiny. Immediately you turn, you just see your village. You don't see another neighbor. And you remember. What about the farm? What about the tractor there? What about this? And God is telling you you will rise from that level. Some of us, where we come from, maybe it's even a hut that you are staying, a real hut. So what? Say after me, so what? So you get angry. Your dad is a carpenter. You just see one guy pass, you say, that's my, my father's younger brother. All these people, they tell them, work hard, they will work hard. Have you seen people like that? Denying their father and mother. Their mother sells akara. 
and they come, they say, who is that? They say, well, they say mommy, mommy. They mention one name. They say, it's just the name we call her. That's the express revelation of complex. You need a retreat quick. Quick! Whatever you are doing, stop and go for a retreat. We are not proud of ourselves. See, this is what makes a lot of guys. They come to meet a lady and they come and they are telling her stories. Say to sin. Um, my father just dropped one jeep. Who asked you? Who asked you? See, and the other day, self, I was even wondering, uh, you care for anything? He doesn't have money. Pressure. Pressure. He begged for someone's phone and told the guy to call him when he's with this lady. See, I deliver you from that mindset in this place in Jesus' name. There are many ladies who cannot go and see their boyfriend or whatever. They say, please give me this phone. Please give me your shoe. Please work with what you have. Covetousness, a product of mindset. You can't see anything good and leave it quietly. Hallelujah. Mindsets. Do not be conformed to this age. There are many of us who have adopted wrong mindsets of success right now. You're already imagining. If I become like Pastor Jakes, my own Zue Rao not sit at the back. She'll be standing, holding the water. When I want to drink, I'll just shift my mouth like this and she'll put. That's your mindset. And as crazy as what I'm saying is, there are people today who are doing it. They do it with honor and dignity. There are pastors today that if their members see them anywhere, they will kneel down and have to greet them. And then he stands. You are embarrassing yourself because that's a mind. By the time you rise to a higher level, you see. You want to write a book. You say you want it to be a bestseller. You go and meet somebody in community market and say, can you produce this book for me? Is it going to be a bestseller that way? You are used to photocopying handouts, small books. God is saying, write something that will take nations. Are you getting blessed tonight? We are going to pray. See, the point of my message tonight is to reveal to you that your mindset has been keeping you where you are. As a ministry, we are where we are today because of our mindset. If we rise higher, we will move higher. Hallelujah. You see a lot of people, 10 years, 20 years, 5 members, 10 members, they keep giving all kinds of flimsy excuses. Good preachers, but bad leaders. They won't read about leadership. They won't read about all of these things. They won't increase. They won't go anywhere. You will remain at the level you are until light comes to pick you out of there. He said, arise and shine. Why? For your light. New knowledge. I promise you, you will remain at any level you are in life until light. If you are ready to disengage your former mindset and pick up something new, you can rise from that level. Hallelujah. God is telling you, you can be a TV host. And you sit down and say, I can't speak English. How many months does it take to learn sound English? I won't go back, I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence. The way you grew up, you cannot remain like that. I won't go back, I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence. Every time I look at myself, I see a great leader. I see a visionary leader. I have such a healthy perspective of my life. I admire people, but not enough to intimidate myself. Because I have stayed long enough in the secret place to know the things that he has put in me. And I know they will open any door. Many of you are trying to be like people who will one day admire you in the future. Did you know that I, I, I wanted to be like many people who want to be like me today? 
because I did not know what I carried. And so we have all kinds of models on TV. Rihanna. Who again? And you look at them. And you smile. You imagine yourself in their place. Wrong models. And you begin to follow their own path. And you end up in destruction. I told myself, I will not die the way I was born. I was born quietly. Only my mother and a few visitors. I wouldn't die that way. Jesus was born in a manger. When he was going back to heaven, there was a crowd celebrating him. Let me tell you something. You can choose to rise beyond your level. There are many of us, ABU has limited you. Carryover has limited you. Your class of degree has limited you. You think you may never rise beyond that level. You must believe in yourself. Listen to me. I'm speaking to you right now. You must believe in yourself. Believe that you can become anything. The only limitation in my life is the voice of the Holy Spirit. As far as I'm concerned, there is nothing I cannot become. Nothing. 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 I remember when we were going to have our crusade in 2006. We are organizing it. You are going to a local government. Young. Just smiling. All we had was faith. But we knew we were going to do it. They limited God many of you have limited god every time you look at the frustration of your family members god tells you you are the savior you will arise but every time god speaks it another voice another voice starts speaking to you and many of us have yielded to those voices oh i believe in myself i have a great life i'm telling you i'm telling you the best that god has for me is my heritage in christ I believe I will write books that will shake this generation. Yeah, I believe it. Listen, we said this thing, sir, right from those days. We'll pray and say we know it, that God will do it. That's why I tell some of you, make faith proclamations. Whenever you say I'm great, you just look. You say I even trekked from campus to come. So what? So what? There is nothing you are going through today that somebody did not go through and conquered it. Some of you have not eaten anything. You came for koinonia hungry. It's not because restaurants closed today. It's because you didn't have money. Let me tell you something. That is not enough to give you a mindset that you are a failure. Every time you go to your mother or your father, they call you and say, my son, my daughter. It's not like I don't love you. You know if I had more, I would have given. If I were you, I would go back and say, Lord, Take me out of this mindset. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Make me a world changer. And let my parents have a foretaste. The man called Pan and Pasi Paul was living in my auntie's boys quarters. Used to stay in my auntie's boys quarters. When he started this kind of music, they kicked him out of many churches in Joss. But today, when you enter his office, you see awards that you cannot imagine. hallelujah so the first point tonight is refuse to remain where you are this is why we teach the things we are teaching you must know that you are a leader you won't be a follower forever say i will not be a follower forever say it you cannot remain a follower forever you cannot remain in a rented house forever you grew up there. You saw them humiliating your father and your mother. You are not doing anything about it. God is speaking to you tonight. He said, I'm a lady, but nobody has come to marry me. That's a mindset that needs to leave you. Because you believe that your life is tied around a man. Hallelujah. There are many guys here. You are just waiting to graduate. Some of you got your service this today. You are happy. Not because they give awards in service place. But because of how much is the Alawi? 
18 5 and you are smiling in your world that's prosperity say i never had it that good leave me let me enjoy it your lecturer looks at you and says i brought your test and i look you are a dull student i've always known pretty lady dull head and you carry that mindset you define yourself I refuse any report that is not the word of God whatever my father did not have I will give it to them whatever my mother did not have I will give it to them I told my mother this I told her you relax since I'm already alive I'm walking you just get ready to smile every day of your life the remaining part of your life will be years of laughter John the Baptist was called a son of consolation many of you the way you are going you see someone 35 years your parents are still helping you 35 years pop season and someone you are 35 years no pressure will you marry i'll think about it what are you doing in your life that lad nobody should leave me alone i'm not a small child and every time they put small food say i'm not a small child so you know back out out of your father's house no sense of responsibility you are not paying any bills you are not doing anything the little money you get you go and play football you come back in the evening throw your boots everywhere what kind of life is this and you went to school you read you graduated but your mindset has betrayed you and everything people just say is somebody in your village calm down before you finish calling the names of innocent people in your village find out how see there are many ministries claiming blessings oh we are working in millions ask them do you have an account do you have an account they say no whose account will you use say well uh, when it comes we will be able to arrange ourselves let me tell you something it will end in those loud noise in the mic you are not pre the bible says go and borrow vessels if you truly believe that new oil is coming borrow vessels it didn't say borrow oil it said borrow vessels hallelujah three ways to transform your mind right quickly number one ah oh, the lord is challenging people tonight right number one Generally speaking, all right, this is just, generally speaking, you need a new orientation whenever you find out that you have a faulty mindset. The Bible says you cannot put new wine in what? An old wine skin. You need both a new wine and a new wine skin. You want to transform your mind, number one. Realize that your present mindset is not its best. Realize it. Come to terms with it. I don't care if your father is a billionaire. It's your father's money. It's not your money. I don't care if you are a five-pointer. Or you are a one-pointer. I don't care if you are working in a bank. Or you are working in an oil company. Listen to me. There is more in your life. You cannot remain this way. I've always known that there is more in my life. Some of you are here. And all that is in your world is. You are local champions here in Zaria. The best student in your class and you think that's how the world will treat you everywhere you step out and find out a rude shock when i was in secondary school we used to win every debate we go to we didn't know that it was just that our standard was low i was saying we are very smart people one day we tried one school i won't mention the name ah we tried one school what they did for us that day I was one of the speakers. We embarrassed ourselves that day. We hated our school that day. Hated the principal and everybody. I just looked at them. I wished I wasn't in that school. Because we were local champions. In our little local government where we were. Hallelujah. The first day I tried jam mathematics. After five hours I got four. Only four. 
I said, this is serious. Serious. I was the best student in my class. I said, this is serious. A mindset kept me believing that I'm a superstar. Now, Jam brought their question. I didn't do for damas. So I knew that this is not child's play. Immediately, I recognized the need. Hallelujah. I started organizing lessons for my classmates. A rescue mission. Quick. Because I told them, look, let me tell you, we'll write Waek and Bishop. Because of that, I started challenging myself. I tried GC. I did very well. And when I looked, I said, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. I was a laboratory prefect. I won't go out. Oh. I locked myself in the lab there. Because I didn't know more. So I thought all that there was was intellect. But I sat down there. The other best student. In my school then, the smartest student got lab and library, not head boy. Head boy was for talkatives. If you were smart and they wanted you to have a good result, you become the library prefect or the lab prefect so that you can sit down in one place. I made up my mind not to be small. I started reading further maths on my own. 60% of my chemistry I learned it by myself. See, I didn't do the kind of your school. In our own school, we were building the school as students. When you misbehave, you just go and change. Oh yeah! Change and go and serve job. Some of you were you went to schools where you already laptop. Did we ever have a laptop? We had to borrow Whitstone Bridge for work. Yet I, I told myself, I said, this will not define my life. I'm going far. Are you listening to me? Many of you have kept yourself in positions giving flimsy excuses. I told myself one day my world will celebrate me. Hmm. Number one, go for knowledge. Buy the truth. Please write. Buy the truth. Read books that will mold your character. Read books that will teach you leadership. Read books on fatherhood read books on ministry this is why we are putting together a school of ministry the school of ministry is not for pastors the school of ministry is to raise ambassadors in all spheres hallelujah raise ambassadors go for knowledge look at me many of you have ne some of you apart from your grammar english grammar that you read you've never sat down to read any book and finish it you look at a book five thousand naira is over my dead body five thousand abba what will five thousand do i can buy beans i can buy one tier of 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 gary and mix all this in. that's why it's only <laughs> my mother who says only your stomach that will be coming out your destiny will remain where it is because that's the only thing you are feeding. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Some of you, God has told you you'll be a leader over many. What books have you read about leadership? You don't know anything about leadership. So you are doing traditional leadership in your faculty. Because that's all you know. That's what you saw the king, <laughs> the king of your village do. Now you have become a president. And you, are, you just imagine... The members of the cabinet, those people that are carry Koboko and follow King. And you begin to treat people because that's what you know. When life puts pressure on you, you reveal your mindset. Many of you lack character. You lack communication skills. You wake up in the morning, you cannot greet your roommate. To say good morning, say, am I a child? They gave that to me 5th of October. 1975. You, they gave birth to you. 6th of October. Am I not older? You see, mindset. Mindset. You eat food and ask the person, carry the plate. Mindset. What? When, when has it given anybody food? And you are bold to say it. 
when people come and say this is my younger brother must you tell us are we blind forget the fact that he's bigger than me he's my young calm down mindsets you'll never be a leader with this mindset you may be a good tongue talker you may be a good miracle worker but you cannot take your world this way because the world you are going to take are not born again it takes more than just praying in tongues to take your world are you listening to me there must be a level i was reading an article by jimo ibrahim he just celebrated his 46th birthday and i was so touched i was just reading about his history jimo ibrahim some of you don't even know who is who is jimo ibrahim you are in nigeria here the only thing you know is is what's which is the latest soup opera now they don't do it again paloma second chance that's all you know that's why you are behaving like what you have been watching but tonight i'm challenging you say after me i go for knowledge because see when you begin to the bible says look for it says jesus took the book and he saw where it was written by prophet isaiah the spirit of the lord is upon me he found in the volume of the books where it was written you can find your destiny when you go for knowledge the first book i began to read when i made up my mind to walk in destiny was discovering your potentials dr miles monroe i will never forget what that book did for me understanding your potentials i didn't even know there was something called potentials and i said all right this is it this is it i will begin a journey read books on leadership you are always fighting with your sister at home it's a sign that you are going to beat up your wife get a book on fatherhood quick quick every small child you see you say me i hate children ah that's a revelation that you need to read something go to sunday school books cm read something read scriptures about jesus relating with children receive that impartation some of you are about to write your exams once again the mindset that brought you i patched three c's added two more and i came to this school and now god is telling you this semester you will have the best of results and you laugh you say where are them uh, where are them so 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 as if their success will stop your own i believe in myself i know that god can take me anywhere do you believe this about yourself hallelujah i'll never be small in life no never i will do great things for the kingdom this is where i like christ christ embassy oh they give you a mindset of a champion they give you a mindset of a warrior they they shape a mindset that refuses failure totally i refuse to be a failure in life i refuse it i refuse the limitations of my lineage whoever has looked at your family and said can anything good come you hold on and see you are a miracle on your way to happen are you listening to me everyone god has given you a music ministry every time you look at these great people who told you you cannot become like one of them every man in the earth today was born he was a baby in the hands of someone a mindset took him to where he is they asked jimo ibrahim they said what is the secret of your blessings and he said number one the grace of god he said number two knowledge he said sometimes i look at nigerians if they know what i know they will live where they are instantly do you know that's true the same way you can grow in knowledge and mindset and change different things look at what god is doing by the grace of god the organization the leaders and the rest you think this is guesswork this is not just prayer many of you want great leaderships you want a great business great company great this you have the name but you've not read any book if you like go and register the name you will remain a broke failure in life broke failure until the mindset of god takes you out of that level 
Hallelujah. The people from my place drink. They drink a lot. I told myself that mindset, I will kick it out of my life. I will never be associated with the evil that comes from my territory. Are you listening to me? There are some of you, your, your clans or villages are associated with different kinds of things. Temper, lust, immorality, demonic practices, irresponsibility. Will you take this as a mindset and say it happens to everybody? Is it my fault that I was born from so-so place? Hallelujah. One day your father looked at you and said, sorry, I cannot pay your school fees. And you had to fend for yourself. Are you going to allow your children to think like that? Many of you are shallow-minded. You're not thinking five years from now. You're not thinking ten years from now. Let me, and I'm speaking to the guys most especially. You are just growing old and, and, and growing beard on your face. You are not adding anything to your head per day. I never sleep any day until I add new knowledge to myself. Never. My eyes does not see sleep until I add something. The more you have knowledge, you will be in command in life. Look at the Chinese, not Korea. The whole hands, their hands is like from here to here. Short people. But they are ruling the world. Because it's not about their size. It's about their intellectual capacity. Many of you need to begin to buy books. Is Oga Jordan around? He didn't come. Oga Jordan. Where is he? He's outside. Jordan bookstore is there. See, it's better for you to buy one trouser, 250, 250 naira on the floor. They may laugh at you, but not for long. I assure you, it won't be for long. Show me a man who will pay the price to change his mindset. You are in partnership with God for a victorious life. You won't die a failure. It may take a while. Hallelujah. Do you believe this about yourself? When God called me, I believed. I have never sat down to think, Kai, am I too small? Am I? No, I don't think all those kinds of satanic thoughts. Because I found in Philippians chapter 2 verse 8, it said, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, I can go anywhere, I can do anything. If God tells me to build a 10-story building for Koinonia, off I go off I go you will be saying it won't happen you will just find out that will give you letter for the dedication confidence but I know whom I have believed see I want you to be confident about your life if you are not confident about your life you will need someone else to keep endorsing you there are many of you that will never be satisfied you do a nice hair you know it's nice you need 10 people to tell you it's nice before you believe what kind of life is that Stop trying to prove points and settle down. Go for knowledge. Say, I contend for knowledge. Say it. Yes, you may stay in the house. You fetch water from the stream. You are still doing it right now. Fetch the water from the stream. But carry your Bible and carry the book. Say, Lord, one day I will have, I will have borehold and I will build boreholes in my village. Hallelujah. You eat once a week, no problem. In the midst of your pain, just tell yourself, I'm changing my mind, I'm changing my life. I told myself this thing long ago. Hallelujah. I believe in E and I. I believe in where God is taking us. That's why all the things that are happening today, it's not a shock. We are just grateful. Never a shock. Not at once see listen it's not happening because of joshua selman it's happening because of a mindset i assure you if you have it you will rise whether you are on jeans or you are it's about your mindset are you listening to me some of you god is speaking to you about bakeries you have passion for bread but you are sitting down you are saying bakery i went to school sit down there the day someone who will pe see prophecies are like rain whoever brings a container will receive with it and will run you will sit down there and be delaying you will watch someone run with your vision and accomplish it 
I believe that by the grace of God, one day we will own our television station debt free. We won't stand on air telling anybody, please bring $35.05. No. Because God has given us the law of prosperity. It's a matter of time. Gentiles will come from, a day will come, it will be a privilege to partner with us. Oh, it will happen. Do you believe this about your life? I believe a day will come when I will not even be allowed to buy anything with my money. Because people we have changed will be too grateful. Too grateful. They'll make my daughter head girl by force. Just as a way of. It's my mind. It's my mind. One day my child will say, Daddy, can I have this in the fridge? I say, Go on. I didn't enjoy it. Have it. What will your child say the day he calls you, Daddy? Will he say, Daddy, I have something that I want to discuss with you. Why are we like this? change your mindset you have received a wrong mindset many of us do not like what we receive from our parents but you are already becoming what you hate because you are not doing anything about your mindset exactly what you hate you are already becoming it I refuse to remain the way I am I contend for knowledge I won't behave like a Nigerian I will behave like a citizen of the what is in it for me that's the language of Nigerians. Chop, I chop. You can never help somebody and go quietly. What is in need for me? Wrong mindsets we got from Nigeria. Many of you are adopting it. You like it. Someone says, do you have the number of somebody? Yes, I have. Send me 200 naira recharge card. You would think you are joking, but now you are used to it. But I deliver you from that mindset tonight. Tonight we are going to be praying. So number one, go for knowledge. Number two. Consistently speak the word of God. Consistently speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. The word of God comes with power. The word of God comes with hope. Hallelujah. I was talking with the protocol team yesterday and I was telling them a day will come who will have bosses. Bosses. E S S S S S S S S bosses that we can give away to help many people. Look at today, by the grace of God, we are going to Shika tomorrow and Sunday. Hallelujah. And we are not even thinking about the budget. Oh, well, we do this. The grace of God. We are going to now start becoming a blessing to others. You, if you do not believe, do you know many people will suffer because of your mindset? You can be a blessing to the world. I refuse to be where I will not remain in this state. Next month, I should have left this realm of reality to a higher one. I learned this from Samadayami. Oh, I have certain people who have mentored my mind. Some of you sit down there. God is telling you, listen to Samadayami and Matu Ashimolo to understand success principles. Your pastor is there with his mindset telling you don't listen to anybody again. He's a broke failure. It's just that he's called. He's sitting there and he's educating you in your little world. And you will not break boundaries and see what God is doing internationally. Was this message preached by my pastor? No, I won't listen to it. And you remain there. Hallelujah. You see an elderly woman speaking wisdom about family life. You won't humble yourself and listen. You say, I'm a pastor in my church. You are fumbling, fumbling in life and you won't calm down and listen. Are you learning something, please? See, you must begin a project and tell yourself you are changing your mindset. I'm changing it. I'm changing it. Hallelujah. When Tosin was the former treasurer, 
she surprised me when we just started koinonia listen when we just started koinonia this offering bags that we have was a personal donation we just started and she made at least 400 and she began to tell me she said josh i think we need to start preparing for a counting machine counting machine she said because i see increase coming what's your thought like your many parents didn't plan they put one small house with one garage they never plan for increase that's how many of you are thinking my little life my house one room all the children will stay me and my wife will stay an extra room where we are fighting she will stay there that's your mindset listen say after me i break free everybody inside and outside i break free from the mindset that came from my village that is associated with my lineage tonight i break free in the name of jesus i declare that i rise above cultural limitations I rise above the limitations in Africa the world will hear my voice I'm the head and not the tail I have books to write I have lives to change I'm a leader yes that's how you speak and then you behave like one you start composing yourself like one no misbehavior iron your shirt dress smart if you are barbing bab well don't bab as if they took light and, and and you ran out be smart it doesn't matter what you have your notebooks that you're right be smart when you get up in the morning dress your bed keep your room clean you are behaving like your de your future many of us are still behaving like our past God gave you a bed. You are still remembering the days of the match. You don't need to repair match. You just stand up and leave your bed sheet. White bed sheet. It has turned to brown. Visitors come and say, have seats, please. Dirty bed sheet like that. You are not going far with that mindset. And some of you are ladies. You won't go far. Forget about all these things. Walk on yourself this night. Hallelujah. You want to be a leader. You cannot sit down. The day 5,000 enters your body, you are, you are shaking. You must see that you must spend everything. You withdraw it and just put it in your pocket. You are not using it, but you are just happy. You are just walking around filled with anxiety. What kind of life is that? See, I'm challenging you. We are going to pray. But God is speaking to someone. Enough is enough. Are you going to continue where your parents stopped? Or you are going to rise? God gave you a job. You are not doing your best now. They ask you why. You say because I'm collecting 10,000. Bible says he who is faithful in little. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I break free from mindsets. I want to teach you four things very quickly. Right. I taught it some years ago. To help us conduct ourselves very well and behave like leaders i want to teach you four very important words number one please write it p-l-e-a-s-e -E, please write it quick and look at me please because we're going to pray we're out of time look at me many of you this is the singular word that has cheated you from your destiny you can never say please carry this thing and give me please. everybody say after me please did he kill you say it again please learn it this is why many of you were not vote they they didn't make you the president in your family but become it because you cannot be cautious let me tell you something when you tell people please it's a sign of value on them that you respect them that you honor them the highest psychological need of any man is to feel valued and to feel important please can you help me 
please can you do this please tell him i may not make it please learn it this singular word has made people millionaires and has made others broke and they will continue remaining where they are as failures please please i may not be free now please i may not hello 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 call me call me call me i don't have credit thank you Shaka, ta, 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 ta. you are praying in tongues i assure you you won't be a leader if i am the person i'm i'm doing interview for your employment i guarantee you i will employ you guaranteed guaranteed you may be attending koinonia i will employ you guaranteed hallelujah please I give me cold water my chest this food is hot give me cold water is it your own you came to someone's house they are treated please everybody say after me please learn to say please i'm teaching you how to be a leader learn to say please some of you you only say it when you are in trouble please many of you guys if only you told the lady please she would have said yes you carried your mouth and just came tongue talking but no manners grace but no character i want to talk to you i'm saying i want to talk to you are going come now is he your younger sister and then during the relationship program say there are some people here when we tell them to come they won't come why will they come why it takes a lot of humility and it reveals a sense of maturity and courtesy when you tell people please one more time say please say it please number two i'm sorry i'm sorry has made two nations to go for war one demanded a public apology the other one said over my dead body says all right we'll kill ourselves over our dead bodies i'm sorry listen when you say i'm sorry it's not a sign of weakness it's a sign of tremendous strength many husbands have fought with their wives because they cannot say i'm sorry pastors are fighting one another they cannot say i'm sorry hallelujah Politicians are fighting themselves. They cannot say, I'm sorry. You called me a pastor instead of a reverend. Just say, I'm sorry. Say, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ah, why didn't you? I'm sorry. See, sometimes you must not be the one at fault to say, I'm sorry. Sometimes you just need to say it and let it be. There is a saying in my language. That if because you are holding bone, flies are disturbing your mouth, throw the bone and let the flies go with it. Nice proverb, not dull proverbs that don't have meaning. Very nice proverb. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I'm sorry. I, you didn't do anything but just say it. You are learning. Say, I'm sorry now turn to your neighbor and say i'm sorry some of you to sting your ego that's the mindset i want to go out say do it again i'm sorry from today listen now that i have access to you i must teach you and you must learn it by force tomorrow will not be able to say it pastor to members whatever i'm sorry when you hurt people tell them you are sorry i'm sorry sometimes you may do it unconsciously whenever you are aware i'm sorry meaning from your heart not this kind of wicked i'm sorry that is even more painful it's better to keep quiet they say two of you apologize i'm sorry is that a problem see two couples who call for counseling okay it's okay it's okay say i'm sorry i'm sorry say darling i'm darling i'm sorry you know that this 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 is not they are not even ready for reconciliation but the bible says god has given us what the ministry of reconciliation everybody say after me i'm sorry you must learn it people hurt you every day and you are hurting others as much as they are hurting you so you must get set with i'm sorry you will use it many times in your life are you learning something this night is something changing in your mind 
Many of you, after this grace, you just need to call. You are broken. You are suffering because you didn't tell your father, I'm sorry. They would have sent you money since January. You have not received your allowance. Now is March. Only that day, I'm sorry. I shouted at you that day, I'm sorry. And Monday, you will get an alert. But you are sitting here. You are dying. Your father is enjoying. You are suffering. Please, after this, go and take your phone. Or break your pride and help yourself. Exam is coming next week. I'm sorry. Number three. Thank you. Thank you. Look up. Look up. Do you know thanksgiving is the principle of multiplicity in the realm of the spirit? Are you listening to me? When you thank someone for what he has done, he will reproduce it. Hallelujah. Thank you. If someone does something good to you 20 times, say thank you 20 times. 20 times. Don't say I said it one. I said it one. 20 times. Thank you. Say after me, thank you. An expression of gratitude. An expression of compliment. See, these are the things that make people to love being around certain atmospheres some of you now see the reason why you don't have any friend you are your only friend your environment is, is acidic it chokes everyone that comes around you thank you someone buys you a present someone says ah um you were supposed to iron your shirt i just ironed it for you because i thought you'll be praying you say eh -eh. that's exactly what you do to your wife she just cooks and said, darling, nice meal. He said, mm -hmm. I'm reading newspaper. Thank you does not kill. Thank you. Everybody say after me, thank you. You go for an interview. Please, may I sit? Yes, you sit down. When you finish the interview, you say thank you. You are talking in a meeting, whether business meeting or leadership meeting. They say, all right, you speak. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. This is what I have to say. Ah, people will be looking at you. They'll say, now we need a chairman for this. But before they say anything, they say you are the one. You see the reason why many people pray in tongues. They pour gallons of oil on them, but they remain where they are. Because their mindsets betray them. You got first class, but you don't have manners. No character, wrong mindset. And you are not walking till today. hallelujah everybody say after me thank you you must cultivate it tell people thank you someone adjust your seat someone held you thank you thank you don't say if i speak too much i'll become cheap say mindset where did you get it from finally god bless you oh you must learn to bless people When I taught it four years ago, I added one, I love you. But our society has become so bad. You tell someone I love you, say you mean it. Instead of him to say thank you. Say, ah, why did you say this now? So let's stop at God bless you. <laughs> we say I love you when we're in Colonia here. Or you go and tell your classmate tomorrow. First you say, my God, this is unbelievable. Ah. Say after me, God bless you. In Jewish days, if you curse your son, they will, they will stone you to death. They blessed their children. Even the Lord spoke in numbers to Aaron and said, In this manner you shall bless the people. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. It was a benediction of blessing that was given to the people every time. Many of you don't bless people. They come to you, they go back scattered and battered. There must be words of love. See, just these things I've taught you, I assure you, is enough to make you an extraordinary leader. 
Let's review it very quickly. We are praying. Number one. You, you see, you cannot remember. Number one. Say it. See, some of us are feeling like big boys and big girls. You see, this is the, this is the mindset. When you say, please, you are feeling kind. Like this thing where you are making us become like children. Are you mature the way you are behaving? Number two. Number three. Number four. Don't never forget this. Begin to use it immediately. Begin to use it immediately. It will work like magic for you. See, many of you are already feeling a healthy esteem about yourself because you're announcing that, ah, so I'm having some secrets now. I'll go and try it. Let me tell you, it will open some doors for you beyond your imagination. Please, use it for your roommate and see the way they will love you. Say, this is my roommate. You don't know my roommate. That's why no matter what I use, use it. Just use it first. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Strongholds of the mind. Walk around and pray in one minute and say, Lord, I have a mindset that needs change. From tonight, begin a journey in me. Lift your voice and pray. Inside and outside, begin to pray and prophesy. Lift your voice and pray. Say, Lord, my mindset, my mindset needs adjustment, needs realignment. You have begun a work in me. Help me. Show me the relevant books, the relevant materials, the relevant knowledge, scriptures that would change me. Hallelujah. Look at me. We are still praying. You are going to pray. Guys, all this sagging your jeans, you sag it down and you tie, you, you tie your belt on your, on your laps instead of your waist. It's called stupidity and childishness. No lady will marry you like that. Grow up this night and start behaving well. Hallelujah. Oh yes. Yes. Lift up your voice and pray and say, Lord, I begin to work on myself. Come on, you are a leader. You can't remain a child forever. Compose yourself. You are going somewhere to happen. Pray for yourself, sister. Pray for yourself, brother. There's greatness in me and I'm going somewhere to happen. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I spoke like a child. I understood like a child. Now that I'm a man, I lay aside childish ways. Lift your voice and pray. I take responsibility for my life. I go for knowledge. Pray. I go for knowledge. I go for knowledge. I buy the truth. And I sell it not. I stop a life of falsehood. And I contend for transformation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of you who are going, you are leaving for service, lift your hands inside and outside. I want to pray for you. All those who are going for service, lift your hands. We are out of time. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord honor you wherever you have been sent. I speak to you, fear not. It doesn't matter where you were posted to. I command that the Lord will cause the earth to bring increase for you. Go and reign. Go and conquer that territory. You are well able. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that as you go, your road is blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ, that at the end of one year, you will be a champion. That at the end of one year, you will do exploits. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your spiritual life. You will not forget about God. In the name of Jesus, go and be a leader. We send you to be a leader wherever you are. Your qualities will distinguish you and make you a leader. I pray for your place of primary assignment. May the Lord favor you without any human connection. May the Lord God of Israel favor you. In the name of Jesus. So, we're going to sing. I don't know what song now. Um, 
what song david dam come just sing any song that god puts in your spirit get the mic someone give him the mic just as you sing that song whatever it is help that person that song is the message listen carefully while the song is going on there is an anointing and then i'll just begin to minister so you can sit sit down sit down sit down you don't have to stand sit down sit down sit down you're not just ministering there is grace upon you in the name of jesus christ you will sing and you will sing like a mistral and as you sing that song will enter the spirits of people and there are certain levels of spiritual knowledge that doesn't have to be taught there are times that you can be still to know you don't need to hear anything i want you to be sensitive to the new dimensions that god is introducing us to be very sensitive he's not just the god of the mountains he's also god of the valleys he can decide to begin to operate with new spiritual formulas your assignment is to be sensitive i'm telling you it's like electricity this is this is the only way to describe it and it's just moving from inside outside and this the same way electricity powers a fire electricity creates several things that's what will begin to happen tonight is a night of deliverance is a night of impartation go ahead you just be sensitive to what the holy spirit is doing go ahead Oh! 
sun to rise, harps we sound, Spirit is saying, I want you to know me more. That's what the Holy Spirit is saying. I want to reveal my presence to you. I want to reveal my glory to you. The Holy Spirit is ministering to us. I want you to know me more. You have known other things, but it's time to know me. The Holy Spirit is calling us into a deeper level of knowledge. I want you to know me more. I want you to know me more. That's what the Holy Spirit is ministering to me to say i want you to know me more man of god woman of god prophet of god apostle of god i want you to know me more i'm calling you to a deeper level a deeper level a level beyond religion a level beyond religion that's what the holy spirit is saying i want to show you my presence i want to show you my glory I want to show you my presence. I want to show you my glory. The Holy Spirit is a person that can be known. The Holy Spirit is not just a mystery. The knowledge of Him is the victory of the saints. He is called the Helper. He says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. He said, from whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord. And he sent us his spirit as the helper. The challenge is many people never pay attention. It takes time to know him. It takes time to understand him. It takes time to walk in his presence, but that time is worth it. Hallelujah. 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 It's restoring your prayer life. He's restoring your prayer life. He's putting coals upon your prayer life. The Lord, I see the spirit of prayer and supplication. He's restoring your prayer life. He's restoring your prayer life. You need it in this season. With this song, He's restoring your prayer life. He's restoring your prayer life. Hallelujah. He's restoring your prayer life. God is giving people grace for prayer, taking away spiritual laziness, taking away the excuses that have caused your altar to become barren of fire. He's planting a new fire. Without prayer, revival cannot come. Without prayer, revival cannot come. The Spirit of God in this miracle service is reigniting your prayer. You are not a believer if you don't pray. You are not part of His army if you don't pray. The grace to pray. The grace to pray. We are at the threshold of a new revival that is coming and there must be a reintroduction of a fresh dimension of the spirit of prayer we have seen measures we have seen faces but in this season a fresh dimension the devil has cheated many people 
and we go to the place of prayer and just waste our time and we really don't pray but in the name of Jesus restoration of that grace for prayer restoration of that grace for prayer restoration restoration of the grace for prayer he will step in to set the captives free God Let me go now. Lift your voice. 
song let me tell you something the kind of deliverance deliverance is not fighting demons no an establishment of the victory of christ experientially upon your life are we together and there will be a massive massive turnaround 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 in a way that will surprise you yes. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. I want you to really be angry tonight and insist that something must break open in your life. At the count of three, you will arise tonight as the God of Joshua. The one that arrives, he rides upon the wings of the sea. Listen, as you shout that name, it's not a ritual. All I see in this room now is just fire. And I know that the Lord is going to descend with a shout like the warrior that he is. Are we together now? Whether you are in the main auditorium, overflow one, two, three, four by the road, following online. I want you with the simplicity of your childlike faith to shout that name Jesus and that fire will come upon you or just must have your mouth. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic mantle and I decree and declare it's time to challenge and confront the gates of darkness. It's time for the sons of Jacob to possess their possessions. It's time for families to be restored. Therefore, Lord, as we lift up the shout to hear in the spirit, I pray in the name of Jesus that every power and every source responsible for the retrogression in anyone's life and destiny it's time for it to be good. Are you ready now? One, two, three. I command that spirit. I command that devil. Bring them out. Shako, Sato, Shabari, Kata. That shout. I dismantle gates. I cause yokes and ordinances.
I'm seeing the spirit of delay. This delay is a wicked spirit. It can tie a life and can tie a destiny. Lift your hands. I see that fire locating a group of people. Lord, at the count of three, anyone here under the influence of delay, any family here at the count of three, may that spirit leave you. One, two, three. I just delay now. I just delay now. I just delay now. Shakur the second take the I just delay now. I just delay now, my God. I just delay now. I just delay now. I just delay now. I just delay now. Says for your shame you shall receive double. The Lord is ministering very powerfully. I'm still praying over delay. Listen very carefully. I'm still praying over delay. Many of you do not even know that currently is delay in your ministry, in your life. Any dimension you should have entered but have not entered is delay. I say it again. I stretch my hands by this anointing in the name of Jesus. Let the fire that will end delay fall upon you now. Let the fire that will end delay fall upon you now. Let the fire that will end delay fall upon you now. says until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful sign and a fruitful sign be counted for a forest i want to pray i don't know what keys results from our lives there are many well-meaning believers there are many well-meaning individuals you have hands but you can't eat you, there is a song we used to sing growing up it says some have food but cannot eat some can eat but have no food this, this is the category i want to address now you have capacity but no results but not rewarded gifted but not blessed anointed but no one is placing a demand on your grace shalakatos shalakatos ma shalakatos kete 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 ente rokas kobara hashene kete balakata shkabarato zanda takato shadia epe kete zata makatos kabarakatos ente sekete zeketa japaru kasabajakata ente koto sharakata in the name of Jesus I decree and declare whatever has hindered your productivity may the fire of the Holy Ghost separate you and that spirit now separate you and that spirit now there's a category of people god is ministering to me right now just just walk with me you always do the wrong things there is a spirit that makes you do the wrong things the wrong business the wrong relationship the wrong friends you don't know why everything in your life when there is trouble that's when you come anything good happening you will go away from it to evil he says he says the lord's prayer lead us not into temptation that means a man can be led into temptation and he said deliver us from evil lead us not a businessman can be led into destruction led into temptation a precious anointed lady with a great destiny can be led into temptation lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil listen one of the most treasured 
gift that you must covet in your life is the ability to hear God clearly the times we live in now guess what will punish you again and again he said the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want here's how I quote it if the Lord is my shepherd then I shall not want when you are many of us hear demons clearly you hear spirits clearly you hear voices nonsense voices clearly you don't need to pray to hear them but do you know that many of us now even our dreams have been hijacked and manipulated you don't even know whether it's god speaking now or not they come as an appearance of light but the message is not consistent with the integrity of god so you don't even know what to believe again dreams are prophetic avenues for the speakings of god to reach the saints but they can be hijacked and manipulated by the powers that be a lady can be manipulated to reject her husband a gentleman can be manipulated to reject his wife a person can be manipulated to reject his voice he is job there are many people they got jobs a spirit told them leave they thought it was god and they left it i'm seeing the lord is showing me a vision be sensitive something will happen here now and i'm seeing people in the realm of the spirit but i'm not seeing ears imagine like a man no ears this is what i'm seeing now i understand by this vision what the bible says he that hath an ear physically we are supposed to have ears but right now in the name of jesus this is not for everybody hold on i'm praying right now there is a grace that will open the hearing of people i stretch my hands lord where are they the men and women that need to hear you in this season for ministry to move forward i stretch my hands representing the hands of god and i command the hearing ears be open now Papa Luka to Siata. Please help them. Be open now. Be open now. For business, be open now. For ministry, be open now. For your career, be open now. Hallelujah. And Isaac sowed in that land. He sowed in a specific, there is a geography to increase. It doesn't just happen everywhere there are people today if the devil wants to destroy them he will give them visa to UK they will think his breakthrough not every open door is anointed there are times the devil destroys you by opening doors it's not always closed doors there are open doors that, that are open doors towards doom he said there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death mm thou shalt show me the path of life he said for it is in your light that we see light we're going to cry for divine direction many destinies are tied down now because of divine direction or lack of it lord what is the next phase of my life you can't remain like this and just sit down what is the next season what is your blueprint lift your voice and pray show me oh god I buy into the mind of the spirit. What is your communication for my ministry, for my life in this season? I don't want to be found where you were. I want to be found where you are. Pray. He that had an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying, not what he said. What he's saying, what he's saying, what he's saying. He said the spirit speaketh expressly. Not the spirit spoke. The spirit speaketh expressly. Direction, O God. Listen. Listen. Let me talk to us a little. Especially, I know that a generation of young people were very proud. We just believe that just because we went to school we can determine the course of our lives with intelligence now destiny 
is not just academics and education you must cry part time per second for revelation this ministry by the grace of god we are where we are because not just because of the ability to hear god but the ability to stay until he says move tiredness can tell you to move weariness can tell you to move he said if your presence goeth not with us don't send us from here oh god we are not going do you know it is costly to go without god it's cheaper the pain of your waiting is cheaper than the pain of knowing that you are where god is not there are men of god that started well but people encourage you and say this is how they do it in ministry when you get to this level this is the next step and you foolishly took a step a step that ate away your destiny and your progress and your blessing hallelujah it matters that we understand times and seasons and that we can wait until god says move i remember after our second crusade in this ministry the next year we we're discussing and they say where are we going I went to the Lord and the Lord said, you are not going anywhere. And I said, okay, we're not going anywhere. Ah, but I thought we'd do it every year. Mm -mm. Be careful. The ritual of religion can destroy you. God used to do this way. It doesn't mean he has to do it the same way. The most important thing is let it be him doing it. Treasure of my heart and of my soul in my weakness you are merciful mm. redeemer of my past and present wrong you're the holder of my future days to come nothing in this world is Jesus, you're the calm that wounds will dry. We live our lives being in a hurry is not the same thing as speed. God is a God of speed. I don't know why I'm preaching this now. This is part of the miracle service. God is the God of speed, but God is not the God of rush. There is a difference between speed and rush many of us the spirit of god is speaking to someone here you need to calm down the way you are running with your life you are going to land in trouble the way you are running with ministry you will land in trouble the way you are approaching marriage the way you are approaching destiny you will land in trouble culture and the sociological um, context of our living can mount pressure on us to run ourselves to the ditch my soul wait thou upon the lord god is a god of speed but until he speaks you are on your own it's amazing how you can be running for many years and find out that you are not moving running but not moving and here comes a man as weak as he is but he can walk at the pace of god and more can be achieved in one month with god than 10 years alone have you not learned the excellency of walking with god he said for with god all things without god outside of god there are things that are not possible apostle my life i don't want to be a failure age is already um, not on my side i must make sure that i build a house now i must and god is saying calm down son you have handed your life over to me let me be lord of your life i say lord you don't know the pressure that is coming from my family let's be careful satan comes to attack us at the points of our vulnerability and hijacks us don't miss the series on friday we are rounding up the deliverance series are we together god is already speaking that's what leads many of us to this life of hustling putting your hand in everything and just rushing around and they say why say man must work all those nonsense cliches must get out of your life and your mind if god does not lead me i'm not going nowhere you may call me irresponsible but let me die waiting my soul waits down upon the lord 
it's now a foreign experience to many of us to wait gone are the days that people will say i'm i'm waiting now, people just think waiting is fasting from six to six waiting means waiting the bible says except the lord builds a house listen very carefully it says they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city man of god listen businessman he says he says the watchman watched but in vain and my bible says it is vain to wake up early in the morning and then to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow only to eat the bread of sorrow i'm speaking to someone be tired of the bread of sorrow the bread of sorrow does not feel the bible says he gives his beloved sleep There are many pastors that just get up and feel anointed and just want rent one small auditorium and punish themselves punish their wives punish the few people that believe in them because they think ministry is just about opening a place and then we have the gods to tell people come it's not that way paul a man approved of god jesus a man approved of god Is God speaking to us? We need to have results in our lives. We're still praying. But you see, God is not a herbalist. No. There are systems. There is a way that he works. And one of the ways that he works is to direct men. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Walk ye in it. And you will find rest for your soul. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying now? It matters. God is interjecting this miracle service to just minister to someone and say you are, you are hurrying up too much. You think it's breakthrough. You are running. You will soon find out that you've been around the same jungle. For someone after this service, you need to go and calm down with your life and say, I've been running since 2005. What have I done with my life? Absolutely nothing. Oh, come Lord Jesus come and direct me give me direction are we together the race is not to the swift and the battle is not to the strong not even bread for them that are wise when a man subscribe to the direction of God your life may look controversial for a while but all that will be before you is beauty and glory then your life will become Beulah and Hephzibah, the delight of the nations, the excellency of waiting. The hardest thing for a believer to do is to wait. It's easy to rush. It's easy to do a lot of things. You will make more mistakes in your life rushing. There is power in waiting. Are we together? There is power in waiting. We're going to pray for the sick now. There's a lot to do tonight. But listen very carefully. If this message is for you, then I want you to receive it from the depth of your heart. You know, when we come like this, there are various things that the Lord is doing to several people. Not everyone is sick. Not everyone is oppressed. But a word can come and God says, be careful. There are people about to relocate now to regions. They've not sought God. They just assumed. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. There is no place on earth called greener pastures. Greener pastures is a spiritual location. It's where the voice of God for you is. God is already helping someone. How many Nigerians smuggled their way through the desert trying to get to lands because they believe the only difference between your locality and any locality in the world is a greater propensity to discern, appreciate, and reward value. That's all. They have a greater propensity to discern, to appreciate, and to reward value. You can be where you are if you are truly directed by God and He will come to you and bless you. Are we together now? How many of you are trusting the Lord to touch you or touch your loved ones we're going to do it very fast because the second session of this prayer i want to settle down 
and really really pray seriously and just dismantle a number of things in our lives the grand finale will be on friday but then you are here we're going to pray for the sick now i promise that we'll do that very early so that we can finish and then attend to other issues now you may not be sick listen carefully but if you are a man of god is an opportunity to watch lord what are you doing how does this thing work what can i learn you must remain a student we're all students in the school of the spirit ever learning but in this case in that learning coming to the knowledge of the truth are we together you are trusting god for a healing miracle if you are an overflow one now hold on i want to specifically minister to barren people myself so if you have any case of barrenness whether you are an overflow one two or three please i want to minister to you myself please make your way very quickly and come stand you're trusting god for a miracle let's do it very very fast there is a lot to do very fast the worship team will lead us and just charge the atmosphere for us while we do this very fast and then at the same time to save time at the same time your your requests your prayer requests if you're here and you're you're yet to write your prayer request go ahead you can spare a few minutes to just write it now please listen listen very carefully except whoever is laying hands on you maybe ask you or prophesize to you or does whatever you just once they touch you just go back to your seat some of you i notice they touch you and you move to the other side of the line and still stand it's unbelief praise the lord or you are saying okay you don't know my problem is here and you are touching here the lord is showing me something about this woman you don't have fallopian tubes at all oh my god they've removed it your husband got another wife creator of the universe what can you do what can you do trying to embarrass this precious lady i don't know you i'm just seeing you for the first time i'm not a woman so i can't pretend to say i know what is happening here but for a woman to not have fallopian tubes all removed and now it has scattered your marriage let me ask you a question and i'm asking it boldly do you believe that god can give you new fallopian tubes Where are you coming from? Madam, let me tell you, there is a God that sits in heaven. God is not a herbalist. He's a miracle worker. Put your hand on your stomach. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus. Father, that's all right. I decree and declare brand new fallopian tubes. The God that doeth wonders. Brand new fallopian tubes. I say it again. Brand new fallopian tubes. Madam, allow for some time and go and check yourself in the hospital. Give Jesus praise. Please help this woman. It's an elderly woman. Help her, help her. Social help her. In the name of Jesus, Mama God is delivering you in Jesus' name. The Lord is showing me somebody. Just, just hold on. You, you will sing, you will go back to your singing. I just want to. I'm seeing the someone, the power of God is going to come upon you here. You are here right now on the line. I want to prophesy to that person. I, I just saw a flash of light, a very strong anointing. Bring the person. 
the lord is rolling away the reproach in your life and the lord is telling me he's breaking the power of witchcraft over your life in the name of jesus christ the bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder therefore in the name of jesus i declare to you not only will you or your brother be healed i decree and declare salvation comes to your family now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ please sing for us that song creator of the universe creator of the universe what can do what can do in the realm of the spirit and i'm seeing fibroid is that true how long seven years fibroid confirmed in the hospital that devil is going to leave you now 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you have children, ma? I'm not married. You are not married? Oh my God. Now you be God, Almighty God.
everyone say after me in the name of Jesus please shout it say in the name of Jesus I prophesy over the next half of this year hear the word of the Lord become for me seasons of signs and wonders lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and begin to pray everyone make sure you are praying make sure you are praying Keep praying, keep praying. Let it become for me seasons of signs and wonders. Seasons of signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Please let's be serious. Say in the name of Jesus. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension of the anointing. Required for my next level of exploits. I receive it tonight in Jesus name open your mouth and please pray every dimension was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen that's the next prayer point we prophesy everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be returned one more time everything that was lost Restore unto you the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, and even the palma worm has taken. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that everything that has left my life and destiny that should not have left. I call you back by prophecy. Lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus. Declare that you might just be justified. Declare.
in the name of Jesus Christ say it again in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare over my loved ones hear the word of the Lord this is your season of rising lift your voice and prophesy over your loved ones please believe what you are saying prophesy I decree and declare in the name of Jesus this is your season of rising a new level a new dimension in the spirit says the Egyptians you see today he said you will see them for no more forever I like you in the next five minutes everything that has attempted to mock God in your life don't be afraid open your mouth and declare that under this atmosphere of the anointing of the spirit you are leaving my life and my family forever open your mouth and pray declares thou that ye might as be justified pray don't entertain unbelief I cause poverty I cause failure pray Jesus cause the victory Jesus I decree and declare that my help comes from above I decree and declare that my help comes from the Lord and in this season I prophesy to my destiny Ebenezer receive the help of God lift your voice and pray call for help
listen let me tell you this was he praying many of us here all you need is the ministry of helpers are we together now the psalmist said i will lift up my eyes onto the hills do you know why he spoke about the hills because god used the strategy of the hill to protect the people every time there was war he would lead them up the hill and if they got there there would always be victory remember elijah when it, when there was time for any contest he would say go up the hill mount camel mount zion mount this and that and so he said i will lift up my eyes to the hills but he said no 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 where comments my help he said my help the, the hill is only a strategy the hill is not my source and then it says my help cometh that means just like faith help to cometh faith cometh help cometh your help can come from other places by divination and witchcraft a man can attract a system of attention but he will pay for it listen Ebenezer is a revelation of the hand of God that can help a man blessed is a man that finds help from God many people are suffering because there is no help life can be cheap when there is help believe me when I tell you this how much is the rent that the God of heaven cannot pay it how much is it what is the job issue with a single signature a man's life can change but I told you every man who helps you has relatives who are in need it takes a grace and anointing to compel them to leave those who they are connected by blood and come to help you this world is too wicked for any kind of kindness to happen by default I like you to cry father in this season I'm ready to receive of the ministry of destiny helpers please open your mouth and cry be serious some of you are looking at me pray pray In the name of Jesus was you praying this prayer session is a very major part of tonight's miracle service and I want you to pray because people are receiving results we are still going to pray over the issue of help let me tell you the truth brothers and sisters you see this ministry by the grace of God is a product of the help of God my life as a person is a product of the help of God it is vain my Bible says to wake up early in the morning and then to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow he said for he giveth his beloved sleep there are men of God that need help there are anointed people that need help there are intelligent graduates that need help there are married men and women that need help 
the holy spirit is called a helper the mercy of god can create a platform for help i've taught you this we are going to pray if you don't pray it will not happen i want you to be tired of your current level financially you all god can step in and you have value you are packaged your value but there is no system of placing a demand you must cry to the heavens lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart prophesy to the north prophesy to the south prophesy to the east prophesy to the west where is the raven that came and fed elijah at the cherry my god arise for me as a helper Shaka barakatos, shaka taka 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 ta, raka taka katos, shake te 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 leba kata ta, shama sonda barakatos ya taka ta. Help for my family, O God. We cry for your help. Pray for your business. Arise, O God, as a helper. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, then we were like them that dream. And then said they among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for us. He said, the Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again the captivity of Zion, like the streams of the Negev. Lift your voice and labor in the place of prayer. Everything that is alive grows. I provoke growth in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still praying over the issue of help. Listen, you are going to pray for your loved ones. I know this about Africa. If you rise alone, you will not remain there. <clears throat> in Africa, as you rise, you pray for your loved ones to rise too. If you are the only successful person out of 15 people, they will stretch you and drain you. If Joseph and his brothers were also equally successful, they will not persecute him. But he was one out of many. I saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing to one person. And the brother said, no way. And they walked him out. My Bible says that a man's enemies shall be the members of his own household. Sometimes it's not binding and casting. Lord, show them mercy too. So that as I'm rejoicing, they will rejoice and leave me in peace. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus. I provoke divine help over my loved ones. I prophesy to them that in this season, receive the help of the Lord. Lift your voice and pray for your loved ones. Financial help, spiritual help, career help. Saza sata chova shana makata, shana makata sana dakata kala koto siyata. Help, O God. Shaba katos, shabros kete bara kato shana makata. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 37 and he took me in the spirit of the Lord and he took me to a valley and the Bible says that valley was full of bones and it says the bones were very dry bones don't dry up in one day it means they have been there for a long time we want to visit age-long situations that have refused to go you were born and you met that problem you have become an adult you have met that no 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 it must go that it has stayed long does not mean it's valid say in the name of jesus every dry bone in my life and in my family hear the word of the lord i decree and declare let life come to you now lift your voice and pray prophesy life your father lost his job since 1991 till today he has not gotten a job hear the word of the lord hear the word of the lord 
hear the word of the Lord. Oh ministry, hear the word of the Lord. Oh business, hear the word of the Lord. Oh destiny, hear ye the word of the Lord. The Bible declares that where the word of the king is, there is power. Hallelujah. And he said, Son of man, what seest thou? He said, Son of man, prophesy to these bones. And say, O bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. And all of that, he said, And as I prophesied, as I was commanded, there was a sound. And then a shaking. Notice that the bones began to look for themselves. Meaning they have the ability to restructure themselves. Kabbalah Kota Shikata. And then the bones were there, but there was no life. He says, Son of man, prophesy again to the four winds and say, O wind, breathe upon this slain. And the wind came and breathed upon the bones, and there arose an exceeding great army. Listen, God is able, God is able to turn a man's captivity overnight. He said, Have you ever heard that a city gives birth in one day? But he said, as soon as Zion travails, we know that birth is nine months. But something can happen to the rod of Aaron and it can burn overnight with no root. I'd like you to say, Lord, let the supernatural work in my life in this season. Business at a supernatural rate. Ministry at a supernatural rate. If it is the Lord's doing, then it must be marvelous in my eyes. Lift your voice and pray. As soon as Zion travails, as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. As soon as Zion travails, pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The apostle said, I desired once again to come to you, but Satan hindered us. Your breakthrough desired to come to you, but Satan hindered it. Your helpers desired to come to you. Have you seen a situation, Ejimi, where someone is about to bless you but before you reach your helper your enemy got there before you and told them something that turned their minds against you he said the rod of the wicked will not fall upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity please i'd like you to be angry in your spirit and pray we are not here to waste time Brothers and sisters, this is how victory is legislated and established in the kingdom. Are we together? It says, do not be ignorant of the devices, the methodologies from the word stratomai, the methodology of Satan. There are methods. He said, do not let your good be evil spoken of. Have you seen that that's a method? That I call you and Satan makes me interpret it as sarcasm. I just called you to say how are you and he says so you are mocking me it's, it's important that your good is interpreted as good Jesus went to a city and they didn't receive him do you think they just they don't, please carry your healing rubbish and go how many men of God were sent by God to families to help them but the devil changed their perception over that grace say no 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 anything pastor they are all riffraffs they are beggars they are liars they are hungry people they just want my money it's a strategy someone wants to teach you something and help you say no this this guy don't no 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 I desired once again to come to you but Satan hindered us how many people today would have been helped by God are we together now you heard that they are applying jobs 
but the devil made you feel that just because there are people scamming people everywhere the job that was your own was a scam too and you sat down and said no way and today you are still employed we need to cry to god to help us know what is of god and what is not of god because many times they look the same it's the spirit of discernment that will help you five people may be cheating you but the sixth person may be genuine and you can't you join anybody that comes and then you remain poor and broke forever there are families today you never talk about anything good sir they gave us a prayer no 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 that's how that useless prophet came and prophesied and collected my hundred thousand don't bring any man of god here whereas the person who god was sending was like elijah to the widow of zarephath the fact that there is evil does not mean the grace of god is insufficient please listen to me there are people today who have been ordained to be blessed to listen but satan has clouded their minds so that they are cynical about everything that is god are we together i remember a few years ago i went to a house to pray for them i was invited and i got to the house i usually don't go to people's houses to pray for them and i went to the house and uh, um i just saw the man the, the owner of the house the sarcasm and the look that he was looking at me here they come these hungry young men again i tried to greet him i even held wine for them so that there's no suspicion and that man from what i saw didn't have up to two months to live and i sat down i was talking with the family and the man was just looking you know you know all this do do and leave my house until by the mercies of god god began to speak to him at the end of it it was him that escorted me out say ah, ah you are you are you know my friend they collected my i said look at this man would have missed this miracle brothers and sisters some of our loved ones you know what i'm saying are like that their blessings kept passing for the last 10 years they organize a program near your house and they say no 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 once it is not you it is not god it's an error what of business opportunities just because people have been scammed here just because something came out and something happened they be anything business god forbid don't even mention anything oh sorry yes no 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 don't talk to me and then you remain poor and broke and say god what is wrong he told joshua be strong and of good courage in life it takes audacity to know when your opportunity comes 28 of genesis god came to jacob and jacob out of his fear and cynicism was not ready for that visitation the next verses would lead him to the house of laban where he learned by his pain by chapter 32 he was ready the bible says when god came again he held him he said whether you are not god i will shall hold you it's in your holding i will find out i won't let you go till you bless me he said what is your name he said jacob he said thou shalt no more be called jacob but israel for as a prince you have power with god and you have prevailed and he touched his tie and blessed him and the bible says then the sun arose and he called the name of the place peniel for he had met with god face to face i have seen god face to face and my life arose and the bible says then the sun arose because it is the breaking of the day that comes with joy for as long as it is night weeping endures are we together i want us to maximize these meetings let's not just come before god and fulfill the ritual and then share the grace and go back it's time for us to move the bible says how forcible are right words you are hearing something that is waking you up and challenging you are we together i know i took i think i took i don't know if it was a whole month or so to pray for destiny help us Hey, Jimmy, your life is stranded until a helper comes. I know this. There was a man who was so crippled he could not walk. And Jesus came to town. He heard about it but could not get there. But certain people came. Your helpers will insist till you are blessed. Listen. A helper is not a well-wisher. A well-wisher is just a sociological being with a sense of empathy. A helper is sent and ordained. His ministry continues till you rise. 
some men came to david in a cave called adulam and they vowed that we must make you king you are seeing a man who is already weak no result ah when your helpers come to you it will look like a charm there will be no reason for them to remain they will call you have you gotten the job sir no sir ah after okay i'm going to abuja for you and you start saying i hope there's no string attached no 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 i only saw myself helping you in a dream are we together every destiny helper has those in need please hear me graduates hear me oh every space for a job has hundreds of thousands of others connected but when god decides to help you he said jacob have i loved jacob have i loved hallelujah jacob have i loved god changes the rules i see this unfair to you Hapa. there is such a dimension the helper of israel when you labor and labor and labor and labor you'll be lying to say you are giving god glory there are many testimonies that are just a product of carnality the way you suffered for that miracle is why you cannot give it when god places a demand greed has an explanation when you when you acquire by labor and suffering and hardship you can't give but if it's freely you received if freely you will give are we together your destiny is one helper away by the privilege of god's grace i've been privileged to be a destiny helper to many people and overnight they got jobs without interview just because i happen to know someone in a position of influence and i say sir please there is someone can you help me i say apostle if it's you that's it the same way someone too has spoken he's the help of god we rise by his help your business will open up by his help everything you have is needed on earth but it takes god to connect you to a man who is unashamed about his need for your grace it is the help of god that brought us here brothers and sisters the help of god there are pastors that need the help of god you can blow balloon and put it around you can do everything and find out that the people come and say it's cold don't we take tea in this church and be sarcastic towards you yet somebody called by god to help you will stand in the rain and say i'm sent and i'm not going anywhere when last did you receive help in your life when last did you receive help please hear what i'm telling you do you know if you do things alone and by yourself you are not blessed even if you succeed in doing it help help that god arises for a man and say young men established within 10 years but i have chosen promise that in one month i will do i will walk a walk in your life that if it were told you you would not believe hallelujah a few weeks ago someone called me he was he was he's planning on getting married and he went and collected the list just two or three weeks ago and the list was quite voluminous and it challenged him and he called me that he's trying to seek advice whether it's the will of god or not i told him i said no that that is a foolish that is a foolish concern are you seeing you labored with a lady to go and meet her parents just because of the enormity of the list you are now seeking whether it's the will of god going behind what is there to ask whether it's the will of god or not listen i know that it looks like it's just a joke but it's a serious issue how many people have gotten high blood pressure because there is no help no help ask the medical doctors they will tell you you buy a car alone you look for food alone you walk alone you seek counsel by yourself you advise yourself no helper you see people moving like cane all around nobody to help nobody to advise you their pastor pastor bology do you know sometimes pastor bology would call me 
and say man of god how is everything happening i hope here in the north there's nothing you know this and that you're fine everything and i say oh pastor you're a busy man why do you have to do this and he said we need to encourage ourselves and i said my god help 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 are you ready for god to really help you our message is by the grace of god are being spread on eagle's wings is by the spirit but is through the help of men 70 percent of the invitations where i go to somebody stands maybe in a church council to say bring this man of god i know see all these people from the north no 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 i know this one who knows you enough to speak for you at the gates because there are times you are not permitted to enter the chambers where your value is needed but it will take mordecai uh, mordecai mordecai is outside but mordecai needs to find favor with the king but it will take god using someone inside joseph is in the prison but destined for the throne a wine presser needs to split your case before the king one more time father listen listen whoever must rise up and be an instrument to shift me to the next level please send them to send them my way i want i i cry that you pray with all your heart men can be helped of god my help cometh from the lord satire. there were many widows in zarafat they all needed help but to none was elijah sent except a widow in zarafat how about the rest there were many widows also needing help but god chooses to send a prophet to just one of them hallelujah the last prayer point and then we'll pray here the bible says according as his divine power please listen hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness to life i will never be the man of god who will teach you to live a defeated life at the expense of your spiritual growth no no there are matters that pertain to life there are matters that pertain to godliness his divine power covers them all so i can excel in the matters that pertain unto godliness and still excel in the matters that pertain unto life i should not serve god and tell my children to go and beg a neighbor for food he says since i was young now i am old i have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread you know many believers in their carnality and the depravity of wisdom they think that when you begin to focus about the matters of life it's a sign that you are becoming less spiritual i can tell you from experience that the pain that comes from the issues of life can make you ungodly are we together the ladies that go into prostitution do they go into prostitution with poor men the young men that join occults all these cult groups vibrant young people and the next thing you see they are in a devilish cult somewhere it's easy for us to criticize them but you will be surprised that it's from that occult they are feeding their families compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity as a man of god i must be compassionate enough about your situation thank god for your spiritual life but i want you to do well that's what success means are we together i have food in my house right now but do you have food only a wicked man of god will enjoy and rise at the expense of the rising of others a true shepherd lays down his life doesn't climb on the ship some of you sow into my life i must teach you how others will also sow into your life it can't be all about me you are bringing seeds you are blessing me and i'm seeing the benefit of it to my spiritual life but how about you i came with a passion tonight if one person rises in a ministry alone is that a blessing no he called many sons to glory not a few 
there are many of you with business ideas there are many of you with ministries there are many of you desperately waiting for a job and men are beginning to say where is your god you are no longer young you have been praying and fasting and doing all of this if you cannot bring fruits that befit your work with god we will stop you from coming for koinonia or we will stop you from doing this and god wants to arise and prove himself mighty why won't you pray well when you eat well why won't you pray well when you the receipt of your children's school fees is being paid for i have the privilege by the mercies of god to support many families here and sometimes I, my eyes are full of tears after a powerful meeting and i see someone standing and say sir my children once upon a time two dear ladies here for five years a jimmy just to buy jam form beautiful wonderful godly ladies and that's exactly what satan wants after the prayer after falling under the anointing you get up and your needs remain and you sit in the night and say look can't i do something the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity many of us have dipped our hands in iniquity simply because of the hunger that is in your belly was it not hunger that took israel to egypt talk to me was it prosperity that took them there no there was hunger in the land and israel had to go to egypt to look for food they went to egypt and stayed until they became slaves when they began to say it's time for our exodus pharaoh looked at them and said aha uh -huh, you are beginning to find some level of convenience don't give them straw is because you are giving them straw that they have the time to even call upon the name of the lord leave them to find straw by themselves and they say moses don't go to pharaoh again every time you want to rise it's like a it's like a thermometer the devil tries to make sure that there is a harsh climate economically and otherwise i stand to tell you you can be of influence you can be prosperous and you can be spiritual jesus grew in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men the lamb's wife is a balanced woman he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said and he showed me a city that was equal in length equal in breadth equal in depth any doctrine that does not preach that balance is not presenting the lamb's wife you are showing something else the lamb's wife is a balanced city the church of god must arise and help believers to do well in life this you see a lot of people prayer warriors torn trouser torn destiny you just see them move around you now go to say i want to marry you and the girl's father says, if i ever see you near the corridor of my house he say but i praise i say so what we keep mocking the name of the lord there are many people do you know that the times that i've had counseling people a major reason why people backslide and leave god is that they get to a level in life now where the matters of life stand glaring before them and they are surprised that as spiritual as they are now the church started as a prayer meeting and you were doing well healing the sick now suddenly you have gotten to a size where you need rent and you just realize that per use is hundred thousand your prayer life just starts going down slowly all of a sudden you find out that your wife is pregnant and they say just bring something just to test and make sure she's fine say i don't have anything say well the god that we serve is a victorious god are we together many of you have the hearts to support the kingdom but the means is not there listen to me listen to me for as long as you are not empowered you will remain a slave in life i give you a guarantee for as long as you are not empowered you will remain a slave the anointing comes upon you but alongside the anointing is capacity for influence it took a man of influence called joseph of arimathea to get jesus from the cross it was not a prayer warrior that brought jesus from the cross a prayer warrior supervised his birth but a wealthy man supervised his resurrection we're a ministry of prayer we're a ministry that fasts we're a ministry of the word but we must be a ministry with results that are all around 
and abraham was old and well stricken in age and the lord had blessed him in all things not some things the last prayer point like naaman you may be the captain of a great army the bible says he conquered valiantly but he was crippled the one or two areas in your life i'm giving you a personal time of supplication now one or two areas in your life that must balance this equation to present christ well let's cry together and say god you have done well in this area and i thank you but lord i cry that in this area may your glory be represented in my life please lift your voice and pray please pray in my life keep praying be glorified be glorified cry to the lord in my life be glorified be glorified you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank you lord you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor keep praying i just want to say thank you so in my life Stretch your hands over the prayer requests and let's begin to pray. This is a representation of our pain. It's a representation of our needs. Just cry to the Lord. from the dead that Lord every request here before you upon this altar I ask my God and my King the one who heareth them that call upon you arise in your majesty and turn these requests into testimonies it is unto you that answers prayer that we have come and Lord in the name that is above all names we provoke your integrity over these issues 
lord there are issues here that only god can solve some of the issues represented here are life and death issues we will search for you and we will find you we will find you with all our hearts we will lift our hands to you in worship and we will worship with all my heart lord i will search for you and i will find you i will find you with all my heart and i will lift my voice to you in worship i will worship you are god from beginning to the end there's no place for argument you are god all by yourself you are god from beginning to the end there's no place for argument I speak over this request in the name of the Lord God of heaven like he has done it before may every request here before God be turned now into supernatural testimonies may God turn every situation here to supernatural testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ just give me two three minutes and we're done I want to speak over your life now when you hold my hands everything becomes possible when you hold my hands Represents shame and reproach in your life. I cry to the God of heaven to roll it away like smoke before the wind. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for every man of God represented here. Fresh fire upon your altar. Fresh fire upon your altar. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every issue of concern in your career in your business and in your life i send the word of god like a messenger to reproduce the garden of eden over your issue in the name of jesus christ when a man's ways pleases the lord he maketh even his enemy to be at peace with him i declare whoever must be at peace must be at peace with you to rise i command peace to happen between you master we have toiled all night he said nevertheless at thy word i want to prophesy to you where you failed before go back again with an anointing 
God that with the grace that makes men succeed. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord visited Sarah. And she called the name of her son Isaac. He said, all those who hear about this will laugh with me. I introduce you to a new season of laughter. 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 Turn again our captivities. Like the streams of the Negev. I pray for you. It will be like a dream of the night. The way God will turn your life around. Anyone here under the plague of death, any family represented here that the devil has vowed that they will not see the end of the year together in joy. I decree, O oh death, where is thy sting? And O oh grave, where is thy victory? I command death to pass from over you in the name of Jesus. He said, Let the people praise me and then the earth shall yield every ground can yield i command your ground to produce for you Amen. daniel chapter 2 and when you read from verse 28 downwards he said but there is a god that revealed secrets i pray for you the secret the mystery that you need to hold on to in this season that will shift you to a new level the kingdom truth the revelation of the spirit because the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not the truth you need to lay your hands upon may my God open your eyes to see it and the Bible says that you shall be called all nations shall call you blessed and you shall be called a delightsome land it's called Beulah and Hephzibah a land that is desirable and Isaac looked at his sons and said the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed I decree and declare may the fragrance of heaven that calls for favor to men may it come upon your life now in the name of Jesus Christ it says thou causest men to ride over our heads we walk through fire and through water but thou brought us into a wealthy place i decree and declare help even in the area of finances may it arise for you i say it again help even in the area of finances may it arise for you finally i pray for every family represented here and that includes those connecting with us online it doesn't matter what part of the world you are following from in the name that is above all names the lord has made a, declare, a declaration that this is our year of signs a sign and a wonder is a miracle with a message on it therefore i decree and declare may your life from tonight become an epistle of signs and wonders i say it again may your life from tonight become an epistle of signs and wonders in the name of Jesus wave your hands and give Jesus praise thank you Jesus hallelujah Paradventure, adventure you are here in this place tonight everyone please listen please no moving around let's honor the name of the Lord you are here you have seen what the Lord has done you've heard me teach and the Holy Spirit began to convict you to tell you that the time had come for you to make Jesus Lord of your life and to take him seriously I want to give you that opportunity right now there are people here saying apostle I've heard about God I've been around the things of God I've been around church I have a Christian name my father may even be a man of God my mother is an intercessor but I I declare my need for God tonight and then there are others here who are saying apostle I have given my life to Christ but at one point or the other I just found my life going haywire and I'm saying I need Jesus if you belong to any of these categories I like you to make a bold step overflow one overflow two the main auditorium you can walk and come out here and then overflow three you can go 
in front of your projector stand if you are there please make your way quickly let's honor them as they come the holy spirit is convicting someone don't wait for someone to come be the first god bless you Colonia, are you appreciating them in the name of jesus christ there has to be someone making a decision for jesus god bless you god bless you keep clapping as they come win that war tonight win that war god bless you as you come it says he that cometh to him he will in no wise cast away make your way make your way to this front god bless you keep coming we have one minute for you if you're coming from outside please double up your steps very quickly very quickly say call for total surrender lord you gave me your life i'm giving you mine right now are there people still coming make your way very quickly apostle i'm not sure if i'm born again or not i've been around the things of god but i'm not exactly sure join them join them quickly when the titanic sank there were only two names those who were lost and those who were saved no in-betweens make your way quickly hallelujah i salute every one of you if you are joining them please join them very quickly overflow three you can move to the front of your projector those online giving their hearts to jesus just follow and pray along with us by faith in the name of jesus now i want you to lift your right hand sincerely you're not reciting a poem you are speaking to the lord and he's here listening to you say after me lord jesus say it again say lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua Salmon. and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Hi.